Good afternoon, collectors. Welcome to Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast here. It is our last one, believe it or not, of 2020. Yeah, the music's playing again. Right. See, Lou, everything was fine until J5 decided he wanted to be part of the opening today. Okay. All right. Well, it's all right. He's your right-hand man, right? He can be part of it. And he was on the right-hand side. I have some good news for you, by the way. What what I think you think will be good news anyway. Okay, you're gonna have Larry Bird on next week. No, no. Yeah, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Good no, job, Lou. I was doing the numbers for our production company up here, or uh -huh. uh, numbers for the shows. And last week's show with Darren Ravel right now sits number two on views of our entire year for Vintage Breaks. Well, f no, for uh, Layton's Loft. Oh, wow. Uh, that's that's awesome. Of all our shows up here that we did this year. And by the way, all the shows we did up here, over 1.3 million views. But that's a whole nother story. But um, Oh, wow. I'm looking forward to hearing about it. I love when I hear stats like the that. The Darren Revolve right. show last week is currently second. On, and um, to be fair, it's currently second, second, and it's only been around for a short while. So it could be hopping in the first that's soon right. enough. That's right. Very cool. Well, I appreciate everyone joining us today. Hey, what's up, Ben? What's going on, Matt? James? Charles? Welcome to the community. Uh, Brandon, the rest of the gang, thanks for joining us on Layton's Loft. What's up, Chef? There's a chef. Oh, God. Thank you for the cookies, by the way. From oh, man. Well, you know, next year, it's funny. This this year, we started out. This is a good package to open. Oh, I like when J5 does that. Apparently, we just got a good package in. Uh -oh. Uh, ooh, I like that. So, um, you know, the whole idea with our cookies was we actually wanted to send out more this year than last. COVID changed those plans. Yeah. A lot of local bakeries, Lou, were not serving, you know, like we're, we're just not like, hey, we can't do that. You know, right. we're not doing that this year. Um, and so uh, we didn't really know what to do. Um, hey, what's up, Lucas? Welcome. Um, we thought we were going to try to work with a few different vendors and almost like have people vote. And then between how much time we had to work with, meaning like, let's say we send out cookies um, from four different vendors, we kind of solicit feedback from people and say, who do you like the best, right? Yep. So um, between COVID and people not, you know, operating to full capacity, um, and I know Chef uh, very well at this point, I've known him for years uh, through Vintage Breaks, and we met in person at the National, I already wanted to kind of give him a shot, and I basically asked for like a little bit more. It was so well received, I kind of felt bad asking for a bunch more, so I said, hey, can you do like another little bit more? Yep. Um, and so... Chef, if you're on, man, you are official selected cookie vendor for 2021 for Vintage Breaks. Uh, we don't need to look at other vendors. I can't even tell you. It was a feeding frenzy. I took it over to my daughter's house for uh, Christmas Eve, and I got the pack Christmas. I think I got the pack Christmas Eve, and I brought it over unopened and just set it down. And, God, we just rifled through that stuff. It was great. Uh, I'm not going to embarrass the individual who said that. Uh, to me, they they compared eating chef's cookies to, let's just say, some activity that's done in the bedroom. Um, and, uh, man, I was laughing my ass off. It was fantastic. EJ, how you doing, EJ? Good to what's, see you. what's up, EJ? Um, so, uh, you know, before we uh, we open this package, which uh, I, J5 presents it to me, it's probably going to be something really good. Um, you know, I wanted to start off the show because I didn't want it to be hanging over at least myself. Thinking about it for the show because I've certainly been thinking about it for several days, um, and uh, you know I'm not sure how many of you, uh, you know, uh, if you will, watching, you know, know about. Take it easy, Scott. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. Um, you know, know if you will, like when I graduated Rutgers College in 2000. So my first job was working for Mark Murphy, the baseball card kid, uh, Darren Prince of Prince Marketing Group, who helped you know, bring Holly Saunders to us and Dominique Wilkins. Um, it's kind of funny how the world can be really small at times. So Darren and Mark were really like the best of friends for a while. And that was my first job uh, after graduating Rutgers College, you know, putting myself through school. I had a four-year degree. Friends were going to work at like Deloitte and Anderson Consulting. And, um, you know, needless to say, I don't want to do that. So uh, because I had a little bit of uh, leverage and, and didn't owe anyone anything and took a shot. So the point is set my second job after working there for two years um, is I went to go work for an auction house uh, yeah. by the name of Leland's. Hey, what's up, Matt? Um, try to watch the uh, spillage of the food, man. These are like $20 t-shirts, but we pay for quality. <laughs> um, so uh, my second job after college was um, working for uh, Leland's auction house. Mm -hmm. And um, I was referred to them by my really good buddy, uh, Rich Albershine. 
uh, at the time. Uh, and we're, you know, we're still friends, but obviously life happens and, you know, we don't talk as much, but, you know, he's still a dear friend of mine. And, um, you know, when I, uh, when I started there, I remember leaving, um, you know, Mark Murphy, the baseball card kids business. And it was quite the change for me because, you know, it was only really like a, a two or three person business, three person right. business. Yeah. And, you know, went to, even though Leland's wasn't corporate, it was, it was closer to Johnson and Johnson for me than certainly working for Mark Murphy was. Yeah. Um, and I remember uh, I was actually doing pretty well, what I thought was pretty well at the time financially as a young kid, um, because I had a pretty good salary. I kind of had my side hustle buying and selling cards. And because I wasn't in competition uh, at the time with Mark Murphy, he really only dealt with unopened boxes. You know, I made another whatever, bunch of money on top. Yep. Um, and so when I went to Leland's, I remember this, and you'll see how I tie this all together in a minute. Um, when I went to Leland's and, and uh, to sit, I didn't know Josh uh, at the time, even though he certainly had uh, an interesting reputation. Um, and, and Hef, who, you know, become uh, close with over the years. Uh, when I went to go meet with them, I very much treated it like I was, hey, what's up, Jim? Happy New Year. Um, I very much treated it like I was doing an interview at Johnson & Johnson or doing right. an interview at Deloitte & Touche Business Consulting. And so I remember being very proper and, you know, all of that. And they're like, well, uh, you know, what do you make now? I was very proud to say what I made because, you know, I, I was a young kid doing okay. Yeah. And, but I did explain to him, you know, explain to them, like, it wasn't all coming from salary. I had a really nice salary. But then I also, like I said, I was hustling on the side. So, um, uh, you know, when we first sat down, I very much knew, and I can certainly say this now all these years later, oh man, Lou, I wanted to work there in the worst way. Yeah. Uh, it was a step up for me in terms of, forget about money. Like I felt more proud to be part of an auction house. It's big. Like right? a small mail order company. Not to say working at Mark's wasn't great. It was, yeah. it was just different. Um, that's, that's a big league company. That's yeah, yeah. So yeah. when I uh, when I told them what I made, I remember negotiating with Josh. Man, he, he was he's a real funny fella. Yeah. Um, I uh, I remember being intimidated, but also like never losing myself because like I wasn't trying to bullshit him about what I was making. So I basically kind of said, "Hey, man, like I wouldn't work here for less than X <laughs> because I'm already making this." Yep. And even though I'm appreciative of the opportunity. So then we hashed out like, well, what can you do on the side versus like, what are you going to be doing at the company and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I remember leaving there. Um, it was in Seaford, New York. They were already, what's up, Harry? Happy New Year. Um, they were already out of their New York City location, uh, which I wish I was a part of um, because it, it sounded like it was super fun. They were doing live auctions in New York City uh, well before either all or most you know sports companies were. Right. Um, but I wasn't really part of that part, although I, I did see some great stuff. I joined them in about 2002-ish or so and, and worked there for four years. Um, but when I when I first got hired, man, like <laughs> I was so nervous with Josh, you know, because he had like a larger than life personality. Yes. And, you know, listen, I, I don't try to sugarcoat things. There were certainly ups. There were certainly downs. And Josh but, is a rattler, right? Josh, Josh likes to rattle you. Yes, but not not in a not, bad not, way. In, in a way, almost yeah. coach tests you so that you're going to be ready for the big game, yeah. if you will. No, not so, malicious at all. But he's just yeah. Like, so yeah. you know, one of the things, uh, and I talked to Hef yesterday. I'm really glad that we did chat. Um, so you know, I'll uh, I'll say it now so I can say it and then talk a little bit more because I do want to talk about Josh today. My time at Leland's. So Josh, unfortunately, you know, passed away on Sunday, and. Uh, you know, I hadn't talked to him in a little bit of time, but yeah. very much look forward to seeing him every year at the National. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, he's going to be missed. Um, he is going to be missed. So uh, I talked with Hep yesterday, and he had some really, you know, I tried to, to have some words of wisdom for him. And, of course, he had some words of wisdom for me and some really nice stuff to say that, you know, was very appreciative of. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, getting back to my experience there, I was sharing some of the really funny shit that happened. <laughs> and I was saying, like, I remember going into Hef's office, and if I didn't like, Hef's office was literally right across from Josh's. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't like what Hef had to say, you know, they would, these guys weren't doing, like, technology. They would email each other what, what I talked about with Leighton. I would yeah. just go to Josh's office and see what he had to say. <laughs> it's like dividing the parents, right? <laughs> yeah. So... so Meanwhile, my friend Jerry, may he rest in peace, uh, he passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago. 
um, Jerry, my friend Nick, and Laura Leterio, and just a bunch of great people that that I came across while I worked there. Um, and of course, you know, Keith and Tom, and and it just it almost it, it really did. It felt like a family, but like a wacky family. Meaning, so I would be in Josh's office. I could hear half yelling, Leighton, what the fuck are you doing? I just told you this is what you should do. <laughs> and, you know, listen, I was a young, I mean, I'm still, I think, young or not as young, but, you know, still aspiring, that's for sure, working hard and trying to, you know, yep. not just do the right thing, but enjoy what I'm doing as well. And, uh, hey, what's up, Ben? Welcome. Hope all is well. What's up, Antonio? Hey, what's up, Bobby? Oh, uh, yeah, Bobby, when you first met me I was at the Toronto Expo, I was with Leland's at the time. It was crazy. Speaking of the Expo, I'll tell a story uh, about Josh today. Man, I bought a deal at the Toronto Expo. He fucking gave, he handed it to me, man. It was, it, but, you know, I learned I learned a lot because of it. So so anyway, to get back to center for a minute, I was going over with Hef. So I'm like, Hef, do you remember I would go to Josh's office? I would talk to Josh about the very thing we just discussed. Meanwhile, my friend Jerry was literally hitting a golf ball down the skinny hallway just because you could. <laughs> yeah. You know, it wasn't like, you know, necessarily like that was the practice. It was just, it was certainly an interesting place to work. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, uh, you know, those four years I worked there, I really started off as, you know, like the bottom of the barrel. You know, I uh, was an acquisitions associate, if you will, if that was a terminology we'd use. Um, and really... I forced their hand to let me grow and have an office because there were so many packages. I remember Jimmy Callahan, who was our shipping manager. I remember all these guys like it was yesterday. Um, you know, there was so much stuff around my desk, Lou, like you couldn't see where I was sitting. Yeah. So I'm like, Hey guys, I need to like get some help opening these packages, a lot of stuff coming in. And so it's just, I was growing up is really what it was. I was kind of cutting my teeth on the auction business. Yeah, but look um, how you carried that forward to Vintage Breaks, because I imagine Vintage Breaks is a very similar situation. Yes. Well, well, you're uh, you're skipping ahead a little bit, Lou, okay, but there's sorry. no No, it's okay. There's no doubt though that you know I've always tried to keep that that family type of atmosphere. Uh, you know, what I do for work, uh, because you know, I, I'm fortunate that I really do enjoy it so much. Um, or at least, you know, most of it. Um, and so for me, when I started off at Leland's and I was starting to be an acquisitions associate. You kind of learn the ropes of, hey, this is how you should accept consignments from people. This is, you know, if you will, how to negotiate. And to be fair, I didn't know how to negotiate, but it was a little bit different with fees. Right. Um, and uh, the best part of that job, at least the early years, was hitting the road with Josh. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I was basically like his right-hand guy, you know, his wingman, whatever the case may be. And, man, we, you know, we had some adventures. You know, we bought some really good deals. Uh we were thrown out of a gentleman's store in, uh, in, in Massachusetts because uh -oh. let's just say Josh didn't see eye to eye with the gentleman. And, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm leaving that. The version can, that, that I can share off air will be told maybe at the National Over Drinks next year, right. you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I learned a heck of a lot because. It wasn't Phil Cassinetti's store, was it? No, but I know Phil real well. <laughs> uh, I know that area real well, yeah. and, and certainly uh, I know Phil is is upset about Josh, as as many yeah. of us are that knew him and and you know know Mike Hefner and know the the Leland's family. Um, so uh, the, the the most beneficial thing for me, at least in the early going, there was like I literally had access to Josh, his mind, his experience on a one to one level. And basis for many trips, which, oh, yeah. you know, a lot of other folks I remember at Leland's are like, fuck, Lee, how do you do this? You know, because listen, Josh, he's fantastic, but was he was intense. Yes. And the thing was, I'm intense as well. And I very much had this thirst for knowledge. Um, and, and to be fair, right, I was hired as a Leland's card guy. I was. But yet I loved the memorabilia just as much. And because I didn't know it as well, I really had this thirst for knowledge. And Keith, if you're listening, you know what I mean? Um, you know, like people thought I wanted their job and it was just more about like, yeah. I couldn't believe that there's a Babe Ruth Jersey that exists and the thing sells for 700 grand. And by the way, that thing's now like four and a half million. Wow. Um, but some of the prices that were in 2002, three, four and five that you thought were really expensive. If you look back now, I mean, we sold that Atlantic city Wagner that we got those folks from Smithville, New Jersey. Um, you know, Josh and I, uh, they had, they had a spot on good morning America, um, uh, and that card sold for like 67,000 and I bet you, cause it was trimmed, but I bet you today it'd be a half million, you know, maybe seven fifty, cause of the Wagner market. Um, so some of the most fun I had was 
not just going on the trips, but like was going into people's homes or place of business, seeing fresh collections other than cards for the first time, and then seeing Josh get really excited. I remember going to one family, uh, it was in Vermont, and man, like it was not easy to get there. It was snowing, like, you know, we've been through it all. Yeah. And no exaggeration, we get to his table uh, in his kitchen. There's 41 play ball DiMaggio's. He has three of them. Josh is like, oh, I like these. Will you sell them? He's like, no. Josh has said, would you sell one? He said, no. He's like, you're a fucking dick. <laughs> but like, not in a way, like, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to get them going. Like, what do you mean, man? You had me come out from, from New York and make this ride. You're not going to sell me any of your 41 play ball DiMaggio's? Yeah. Like, I'll sell you something else. And I remember we would sit, we, we, we did, we sat on the floor probably for hours that day. I'm like, Josh, you think we should maybe like, you know, he doesn't want to really sell that much. He's like, no, no, he'll sell eventually. Yeah. Oh, he knew. And, yeah. You know, I, uh, I miss those days, but, but some of the best times I had beyond that was, um, he definitely made me increase, uh, or expand my palate for food. Oh, really? Uh, so, you know, I was not one of these, you know, adventurers of food. So like, you know, if we were in the middle of bumblefuck wherever, I'm like, let's just go to, you know, the diner. He's like, no, I bet you there's a great place here. And I can hear him saying it in my mind right now. I'm like, no, there might be. And I realized there was certainly the internet in 2002, three, four, and five. Right. But like, you know, Josh, usually people kind of like, like to get recs, you know, recommendations. They ask like the local folks. Yeah. You know, he's like, no, we're just going to, we're just going to choose a place. And man, I'll tell you, some of those places were, <laughs> you know, they were interesting to say the least. But then, yeah. you know, of course, some of them were the, not only the food was great, but the, the discussion in the chat was even better. That's the fun of eating on a road. I love eating on a road. Just yeah. finding those places, getting out of the chains and finding those local places. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, I certainly, you know, I value that part of it uh, very much. Um, you know, all the learning that I did through the years. Um, you know, it, even if I had learned it, you know, at a different place or a different time, uh, I just don't think it would have been the same. Because Josh just had a, a personality that, I mean, he used to say, he used to call everything the stuff. You know, he loved the stuff. And he did. You know, he loved things that were three bucks to 300 or, yeah. you know, 3,000, you know, whatever the case may be. He just liked um, the game. Yeah, you know, very much so. And, uh, you know, when I was talking with Heth yesterday, um, you know, I told him on Monday night I left the office and I pulled over and kind of like lost it. It all hit me. Um, you know, so I texted half and I, you know, I basically, you know, I don't want to impede on his privacy and just wanted to let him know I was thinking about him. I already texted him on Sunday as well. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, we ended up talking yesterday and, you know, uh, I said some nice stuff that, you know, certainly, you know, you don't always know, right. What everyone's thinking or feeling at the time. And so, you know, I just said to half, Hey, I appreciate the kind words and certainly loved my time there very much. Um, and you know, half is out in PA and, Instead of like waiting in the in the distant future, yeah, I'm gonna get out there and you know we don't we do some business, but we don't do a lot of business, and it's not about business. It's about going out there and he's got meticulous taste, and his son's now is like 22, 23, which is about the age I was when I started working at Leland. So it was uh, it was certainly a great time there. Um, and uh, you know when I left there, I left there with the confidence to start just collect, even though we've shifted gears, you know, many a time. Yeah. Um, you know, Leland's was, I, I remember saying at the time I was very proud. They were like my first big consignment client because when I left Leland's, my idea for just collect was a bulk of the business was going to be addressing the long tail of the sports collectible and card business. Uh, meaning, you know, we were going to handle consignments for people on eBay. This is well before the PWCCs and the Probsteins of the world, you know, uh, myself and my former partner, Scott Greenwald, um, and my buddy, Larry, uh, you know, we started it. And uh, I certainly wouldn't have done that, um, I don't believe, without my experience at Leland's. Yeah, it, Josh was a great guy, and I had limited experience with him. But you can tell there are guys right away who go, God, I'd love to have a beer with this guy. Or we get to the National, I want to have a beer with this guy. I can't imagine doing a road trip. That would be great. Because, look, I'm a New England boy, and Josh talked New England. Josh uh, would go at you in a very, very much and jovial way. And when he was hitting on you, you knew he loved you, right? You know, you knew you were in. It was just one of those things, like big brother type of thing going on. You know, uh, very much so. Um, you know, a combination of like big brother and then mentor. Yeah. And I remember he always had this thing about me. Uh, and and like, you know, now listen, things are different. But I remember he he recognized this. And, and for me, I just kind of did it. Whereas like I kept my head down and, and candidly, I was real happy. 
I was making a bunch of money. I was a young kid. Uh, I certainly didn't realize I had, you know, no responsibility, but I now know that I had no responsibility. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, he, like, in some ways helped me lighten up. In other ways, helped me smell the roses. Yep. In other ways, you know, helped me understand sports memorabilia at a really high level where I was able to go out and buy for them at some point, you know, a few years after I started. And I would buy items for their auction and, you know, see it perform really well and make a bunch of profit for the company. And I was real proud of that. Yep. Um, and so uh, when, you, when you create a team environment, you get invested, right? And you, you want to do well for everybody. And it's like, that's always the best place to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we certainly had some, you know, some fun times there. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll finish up the, the stories uh, uh, in a minute. One of the things that, that Josh and, and Leland's taught me uh, in terms of the actual like mechanics of buying and selling was this thing called the buy show. Uh, and what a buy show is, it's really like an appraisal slash buy show. You set up at a hotel, you know, out of town, you advertise in the local newspaper. And, you know, I remember thinking at the time when I was doing it, I'm like, this isn't that fucking hard. I can do this super easy on my own. Yeah. And of course I remember trying it two times on my own beyond the money, the risk and everything else. Like it's a lot of work. Yeah. You got to sit there for the few days and I'll tell you what's up, Brian. I, uh, you know, I, I remember Josh asked me to do these buy shows and, you know, people in the office are like teasing me, like late, you're going to work all weekend. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm like, bet your ass I'm going to be getting free meals and, you know, maybe I'll get a cool piece of memorabilia or a bonus, you know, whatever. I, it, to me, it wasn't all about money. It was, I, I, I very much looked at it as like, almost like graduate school. Sure. You know, I was getting paid and I was also learning uh, a lot about something I really loved. Um, and uh, yeah, Bobby, we'll bring up the Toronto Expo in just a minute because um, I have a story about the Toronto Expo about Josh as well. Uh, and so, um, you know, it was uh, it was it was interesting because I didn't know what to expect. And what they are, Lou, is you go to these hotels, you advertise, you're offering free appraisals, and people come in and they offer things of all shapes and sizes. And most of it, you're not going to end up buying for one reason or another. Right. But it's it's real, man. It's live and like. You want to talk about Pawn Stars? Like, this was the real fucking Pawn Stars. Uh, meaning people brought their stuff in. Josh had his own style. God, you may rest in peace. I had my own style, which I remember him yelling at me for. <laughs> and, you know, listen, the, the thing that Josh that I really liked is, like, when I would stand up to him, but in a way, like, that was positive or, or good, he didn't give me shit for it. He, you know, appreciated I was learning. And, 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 and so, basically, I said, hey, man, if you want me to be good at doing this, you can't, it's not like catching a football, right? When you interview people and you look at their stuff, whether it be baseball cards or signed baseballs or heirlooms from their grandparents, whatever the case may be, like you have to connect. And so Josh had his own way of connecting. And then I developed my own way of connecting. And what I'm proud to say is that my way of connecting, not only did we make the company a bunch of money through the years doing it, but like, after a while, I just did buy shows on my own and I brought someone else from the company, you know, with me. Right. Uh, and, you know, we uncovered some great stuff in those days. 1966 Topps Batman Cello Box, uh, almost fully unopened, means like 34 of 36 packs uh, in the middle of uh, Pennsylvania, not too far from the old Topps factory mm -hmm. in Durier. So, I mean, you know, some wild stuff. And then I saw like the instance of Josh is just like losing his mind where like some, I didn't know comics that well. I don't still don't know comics really great. But I know him better than I did back then. So some and Josh loved comics. <laughs> so people would come in and Josh would give the appraisal. You know, it was fair. And, you know, he'd make an offer, whatever the percentage may be. And the folks were like, you know, I don't really want to sell. And, you know, for me, like maybe I would try a couple of times. And if not, I'm like, well, here's my card. You know, yep. give us a shout. Let me get your info because I always knew to get their info. Um, you know, also. Um, and, uh, man, there was a few where let's just say Josh would get fairly emotional and get attached to whatever items he's looking at. Yep. He's like, I'm willing to pay you more than they're worth. And this is, I mean, I got to tell you, and they, like I said, may he rest in peace, but it brings a smile on my face. Yeah. That's when I would, well, that's when I would sit back in my chair, Lou. And I realized, man, I was in for a show. Yep. And I just took it for what it was worth. You know, sometimes <laughs> he would get him to sell. Sometimes, oh man, there'd be like a fucking scene. I got to ask you, I got to ask you, what did Josh not like about your approach? What, what were you doing that he didn't like? Oh, he thought I could tell you exactly what it was. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're too friendly. You're too, you know, like, just get right down to it. Yeah. I'm like, no, but I, I like to get to know people. 
Um, and his thing was like, yeah, you'll get to know more people if you talk to them faster. <laughs> I'm like, this is what I told him. I said, you should get someone else to do this then. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I did it with a smile on my face. I'm like, here's the thing, dude. I can't do that. It's funny. Um, he would do that, though, but he was efficient about it. I understand. I, I think I understand where he's coming from. Oh, very much so. And to be fair, ask Sam and Jay Fod. I could talk pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when you're, listen, I, one thing I, I always, um, you know, I, uh, I, I think I've always worked well with, with, with folks in general, like from the public really well. And in particular, you know, if someone came in, man, with history, like admittedly, yeah. and maybe Hef doesn't want to hear this, uh, you know, like, yeah, I wanted to hear the story. Yep. So like maybe it cost the company money. Sure. But like, I'm actually interested. Yeah, it's hard. Um, to say, it's hard to have that piece of history in front of you and not get the story. I'm like, where did you get this? Yeah, and then they're like, it's a long story. I'm like, it's all right. I'm here all weekend. <laughs> you know, and I would say, give this to Josh. So Josh taught me this move for a buy show. It was fantastic. I know it's got to be decent because I can't see the chat so well, but I see Sam's face. I think he's enjoying it. Yeah. Um. So Josh taught me this well, and I, and I executed this several times, not just at the buy show, but like at a convention, right? And it's just this is the truth, right? So like sometimes we would be so busy that like we'd be out of the free donuts. So like when you're out of the free donuts, I can tell you the next move you make. You call the hotel room service. You're like, listen, I need a breakfast cart down here right away. They're like, what does that mean? I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> like we're not eating it. It's just for the people hanging out. Right. So sometimes we have rooms of like a dozen, 15, 20 people. And, you know, that would be really good. Yeah. But, you know, because think about it, they're all waiting for you. There's no competition. Sure. So. Um, Sundays were a little bit different because a lot of people go to church. So depending on what part of the country you're in, like you could expect people to come a little bit later on Sundays. There are sure. all these little nuances. So like my point was I could eat myself a big breakfast on Sunday mornings at the hotel on the house and not worry about being on time um, for, you know, for everything. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, so I remember Josh would be like, all right, late and watch this. I'm like, what are you going to do? He's like, listen, we got a lot of people in the room. I'm like, yeah, listen, they're, they're waiting. Like they all, they know the order. He's like, no, 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 no. There's an order. And then there's the order. Right. I'm like, I don't understand. He's like, watch this. So I, literally I was like, folks, I'm going to get a glass of water. I'll be back. Because I had one table on one side of the conference room. And then he had a table on the other side of the conference room. And by the way, a little secret sauce here. This is really fucking cheap. It's like 250 bucks. Yep. The thing that's expensive is your time. Right. And the advertising for the event. Yep. And then if you get a PR person getting you on the radio, doing interviews, all that is really what makes it work. So Josh got up from his chair and I remember he just, he had this way of doing it. It wasn't confrontational. It was just, he's like, what do you got? And they were like, they didn't realize these people were like, we're on. They're right. like, I have a blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. What do you have? And then he would go to the next person. He's like, oh, that's awesome. What do you have? He's yeah. like, Layton. It was almost like from the movie uh, Boiler Room, Recco. He's like, dude, this guy, he, and, but he would do it in a way that I understood, and he would try to be as calm as he could, but I could see steam coming out of his ears. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy has a 1952 top set with a Mickey Mantle that I think you're going to want to look at. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Josh, I want to look at that. He's like, yeah. So move aside, Jimmy, whoever Jimmy's sitting in my chair. He's like, guess what? Howie's getting uh, served right now. I'm like, huh, yeah. that seems pretty fucking smart. Yeah, you, you got a whole new right? I kind of want to talk to the people with the best stuff first. Huh. Yeah. So he did it a few more times. He's like, you get the hang of it. So I remember the first time he made me do it. He's like, I, he told me at the end of the day over dinner, he's like, you did a great job. I'm like, yeah, but there's a butt coming. I'm like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, you know, what what, what else? He's like, yeah, no, you did a great job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's like, but you took a little too long. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it took like 15 minutes. He's like, what if there were more people? You couldn't have as much time being nice to them. Yeah. Now he didn't want to not be nice to them. Right. He was trying to do because I don't want to paint him like he wasn't trying to be nice. No. He was trying to like, wow, Lee, our events working. Fuck, it's working really well. You can't let forty three people sit out there. Thirty nine of them might have stuff that you can tell them in two seconds. That's worth a quarter. Yep. We'll keep them till after. Let's have the people come to the front of the line with the really good stuff. Yep. I would argue we were offering free services. He was. Yeah. So, he was a he was a business oriented guy. You get right to the point. So that's what I told myself was like, hey, you know what? We're providing free service. We're going to help everyone no matter what. But yes, if you had something great, you kind of moved to the front of the line. Yep. Well, that makes sense. Um, Mike, so wants like, to know, uh, Mike wants to know, when you were back in the day, did you ever piss off a cellist where they asked you to leave the house? Did you ever get thrown out of a place? No. No, I got thrown out of a store with Josh. <laughs> I mean, I'll never forget that because it's the only time in my life that ever happened. And like I said, I'm leaving out a few of the really funny details. I know Hef knows them. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going out of order here, but you know, to me, this is uh, very cathartic, and and you know, I hope everyone's enjoying the stories because uh, I realize that some of you don't know who Leland's is, um, but they are you know a very esteemed auction house. They've been around for quite some time, yeah. and um, you know, Josh was just you know a very well known, loved you know member uh, of of the collecting community, um, and so. Uh, I remember there was one year where, and listen, just this is good stuff. Um, uh, I was, it was like, I don't know why. They're like, late, you're not going to go to the national this year. I'm like, whoa. It's like three years in, maybe. Yeah. I'm right. like, yeah. what are you talking about? They're like, no, no, you're going to stay back. You're going to handle, like, who knows? You're going to handle the leads. I'm like, yeah, but all the actions at the national. I don't know if they were mad at me. You know, who, I really don't remember. Yeah. But I remember this. I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm working here anymore if I'm not going to the national. Yep. So what I did was I'm like, oh, I know what to do. I'll pretend it's my own business. Let me show them why I should go to the national. So I dug up the previous, I had pretty good records. I dug up the previous year's records of like what I bought for them, the national and like what it sold for. And then my consignments. Nice. I like I'm it. Like, Guys, I think it's pretty obvious I should go to the national. Yeah. That was one of the quicker decisions they reached. I did a good job. <laughs> so I uh, I got back into the, the 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 love boat of the national. Nice. Um, so uh, that was uh, that was really fun. You know, getting back to the uh, you know getting back to the buy shows. Just it was it was amazing. Like you were you were really out there, man. Like there's no like you know corner store. You literally stayed in the hotel all weekend. Sometimes you're really in the middle of Bumble, wherever, in the middle of the country somewhere. And, um, you know, a few times like weather was really bad and you had to make alternative arrangements one time. Oh, long haired Larry, if you're out there, man, love you. Uh, <laughs> Josh had me do a buy show in Ontario, Canada. Oh, nice. With long haired Larry. <laughs> and we made an incredible find of these Fleischman, uh, cards from the twenties or teens with tabs. And, you know, listen, let's just say it was an interesting weekend. I don't want to like, you know, I know I'm cursing a little bit. There's some stuff happened that weekend that maybe not appropriate for kids of all ages. Yep. Um, so we're going to leave that out of it. But nonetheless, it was an amazing trip to Ontario, Canada. We bought some great stuff. And um, I wasn't going to tell a story about Canada because Bobby brought up. So Bobby Burrell uh, is friends um, with Josh and the Leland's you know, family. And, uh, you know, he managed their booth for them um, the, at the Toronto Expo because Josh wasn't able to or couldn't. Um, and, you know, Josh has some great stories. So uh, one of my first times going up to the Toronto Expo, um, you know, Josh, I basically had two, two jobs for Leland's to get consignments where I would take, you know, the company would take a fee and we would sell people's collectibles. And then sometimes people just want to sell outright and we would buy from them. Right. So I remember going up to uh, the Toronto Expo and there was a card deal. And, and, you know, Josh knew a little bit about cards. And even though I didn't know about, uh, I didn't know as much about vintage cards back then as I do today. Uh, I certainly knew a bunch. Right. And uh, we bought this deal. I remember going over with Josh and just, I mean, he killed me. He's like, this is just a terrible fucking deal. Why would you pay this? And so I'm like going through it. I'm like, no, no, you're not understanding. This is going to grade, you know, this, this is going to grade that. Yeah. He's like, and I remember this. He's like, but what, what if it doesn't? I'm like, huh? Well, it maybe would grade a little bit lower then. He's like, yeah. Would you have paid the same? I'm like, no. Not necessarily. <laughs> so I'm like, huh. So we're going through the whole deal. And I mean, that wasn't the only time, but it certainly, it, it taught me about how to value a deal in a profitable fashion to still be fair to the seller, fair to the buyer. Right. And not all deals work out, but you can't buy deals where you're going to lose money. Because right. yes, then you'll buy all the deals, but then you can't pay people to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all familiar with Pawn Stars and things like that. And they, they take a commercial break. Well, they get an expert in, take some time to do what they need to do at these shows. How do you do that? What, how do you authenticate? How I can do you, tell you exactly what, I can tell you exactly what we do. This is like the most fun part of the buy show. So we knew kind of collectively, sometimes there'd be three people that would go, we knew what our skill sets were. So making it up, if I'm meeting Mr. And Mrs. Smith and they live down the street and they come in with a bunch of stuff from howdy duty and autographs and baseball memorabilia, right. Hey Josh, Let's you take over this. I think you're going to do great with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's right up your alley, because I would know it's not up my alley. Right. I got no one else to go to. So if it does, Josh doesn't know it. Like we're shit out of luck. Contrarily, if Josh had someone with cards, uh, wrappers, anything card related, 
he was just like, oh, that's the card guy. Go to him. Go yeah. to him. Yeah. Um, you and then grading back then, were you were you that on the spot? In other words, if you said that was going to grade out an eight, how'd you do back at the? Well, I mean, I would tell you I've improved. <laughs> so you know, hopefully, I didn't cost Leland's too much. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say I learned how to be um, good at buying, and then you know, and we do this quite often at Just Collect. If we bought something super expensive, Lou, I was always very creative because I wanted it to be a win-win for people. So if someone had a making it up a Mickey Mantle and they didn't want to sell it, and they're like, you know, I want to make the deal with you, but I don't know if it's a six or a seven. It was a big difference in price. Right. I would draw up, and this is before I even met Julie, uh, you know, who's a you know my wife and also an attorney. <laughs> um, like I would just draft like a very crude contract. Hey, if it grades this, we'll pay you this. If it grades oh, this, conditional deals. Oh yeah, even back oh, then. Did. Oh, listen, they didn't keep me around for my good looks, you know, at Leland. <laughs> I was I was good at something. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So I was good at deal making and, and connecting with people. Um, so anyway, so we go up to Toronto and I mean, like this deal, it, it wasn't 700 bucks. It was like seven grand or yeah. like 18 grand. It was it was not chump change. And so my idea was like, hey, well, we're going to take all the cards and we're going to grade them and break it down. And he's like, Leighton, did you think maybe you should have talked to me about this stuff before? I'm like, but you had me do the deal. He said, yeah, but we don't sell cards for like $27 here. Yeah. I'm like, huh, I guess it's a really good point. Yeah. So like, let's just sell them in a group. So then I remember he was being a dick, but trying to teach me a lesson. Yeah. So he's like, Lane, when you sell them in a group, do you think they're going to sell for $27 each more or less? And I go, huh, I think they're going to sell for a little less. Yeah. He goes, a little? <laughs> they might sell for 35% less. I'm like, well, I don't know. Maybe they will. He goes, so do you think you should have paid more for the deal or less? I'm like, well, I guess I see your point. So I learned. Yep. I learned when buying ungraded cards, you can't always pay for what may be or what can be. It's like if you want the cards graded, get them graded. If you yep. don't, this is what I can pay comfortably. And if you have something super expensive, like we'll do it some tears. Yeah, but we all know how he gained that wisdom by making yeah. the same deals. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, there's no doubt in my mind that like – at the end of the day, Leland's paid me. But if you had to say to me, like, would you have done that again and paid and like worked there as like an internship? And that was like your grad, your, your grad school. Right. Oh, man, of course I would have. I, I love that. that. It was fantastic. Real um, world education, right? Oh, man, we went on trips together, like as, yeah. as a group at the company. You know, we had some wild times there, man. Um, you know, we really did. So, uh, you know, I know I've been talking for a while. I wanted to cover some other stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I did want to say that, um, you know, not only did I do I miss my time there, but, you know, it was really nice to get on the phone with Hef and reminisce and, you know, talk about, like, you know, what what you want to try to do moving forward. And so, you know, certainly, uh, you know, everyone in some capacity has, has had to deal with something in 2020 yeah. that they didn't have to deal with. We'll say that. Right. Yeah. And so it's about it's about how you, you move forward. And, uh, you know, for me. Um, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit better about, you know, not like working 23 and a half hours in a day and saying, hey, I haven't caught up with my buddy Liddy in too long and, and fuck it. I'm going to take some time out of the day and, you know, text half or tell him, you know what, man, I'm going to come down to PA and I'm going to take off half a day. And, you know, even if we do no business, you know, uh, we'll shoot the shit and catch up. It'll be fun. Um, but, you know, Josh, I'm definitely going to uh, I'm definitely going to miss you. Um, I missed, you know, the camaraderie of being, you know, part of that, that Leland's, you know, team yeah. and, uh, you know, beyond just, you know, for, for me, I haven't been able to, to come up with the words yet to, to say something on social media. Uh, I did call my buddy, Rich Albersham the other day. I didn't connect with him, um, to, you know, to talk about it. Cause I remember there was like a finder's fee for getting me hired there. And I'm like, a finder's fee. I'm like, I didn't realize it was a valuable commodity. Yeah. And Josh and, and Rich, I remember for years, like, you know, did I get paid the finder's fee? Not me. Did, did Rich get paid? It was, there was a lot of great stuff. But uh, um, yeah. certainly had a, a wonderful time there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll say this last story. It's uh, it's just funny. Um, and I, I, I tell it because you never knew what the days would bring at Leland's. Yeah. So Josh comes in one day. This is in Seaford, New York. Um, and uh, he had some sushi. And his sister, uh, Andrea, was working at the time. My buddy, Nick, and Simeon Lippman, who's been on Antiques Roadshow. So he comes in with some sushi. But it's not like your regular like sushi roll. You know, you share or whatever. 
like literally had a kit. <laughs> and so, you know, I've never really made sushi. Right. But I remember the fucking fish was in his hands yeah. and the knife wasn't working. And he was trying. Yeah, I see your face, Lou. Yeah. So he's looking at me and Nikki and he's like, you boys want some sushi? <laughs> Fuck, no, I don't want your sushi. <laughs> and Simeon, who had like the, the biggest sweetheart deal in the world, worked there like a day and a half a week. You know, we rode the train together from the city. I was working in, I was living in the Manhattan man in the village. Wow. I couldn't have been any happier. Man. I'm, yeah. I'm working for an auction company. I'm living in Manhattan. Like I'm a young kid. Yeah. I thought I had it made. Simeon was like, had it made times 10. He's getting paid more. He works less. Yep. He somehow convinced people he's on the Antiques Roadshow and he's like the man. And by the way, he is the man. Yeah. So meanwhile, the reason why I bring up Simeon, so we're all sitting in this crowded lunchroom. I'm going to play this part for Nick later because he's going to fucking die laughing. <laughs> so Josh looks over at us and he's like, you boys are going to have some of this, right? No, I'm not having any of this stuff. You don't pay <laughs> me enough to eat this. Simeon was forced to eat the sushi. And I remember busting his chops on the way home. Said, dude, if I got paid what you got paid, I'd fucking eat the sushi too. That's right. <laughs> but I didn't. Yep. So anyway, uh, we just, we had a lot of fun there, man. That's really what it was. We had a really good time. Um, and uh, I'm going to miss the big guy. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from him, both about uh, the sports marabilia business. And then growing up, I remember, you know, taking chances. Or I, I wanted this gorgeous Ted Williams photo. I uh, photo oil painting that was in the auction and i was like josh i'm gonna bid on this he's like dude you could do whatever you want he's like i'm just telling you just love the piece and if you don't you're never gonna get your money out of it so he just he really taught me about how to buy and sell not just at a profit a profit loss level but like even for your own collection like when something really kind of gets your mojo going about how to understand about how far to go and I don't know, man. I wouldn't trade that time for anything in the world. That was one of the companies that was part of the nuclear fission of this industry, wasn't it? The hobby about about oh, the, very, very much so. into big business. Very, very much so. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't trade my time there for anything. And uh, you know, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss him a lot. Uh, and I know a lot of people in the industry and his family. You know, the Leon's family, and of course uh, Maxine. You know, his mom is still alive. Uh, his dad Stewart passed away a few years ago, mm -hmm. and then. It, Andrea, who lives in now uh, Maine, believe uh, I believe now she lives in Maine. She's involved in the antique business, and so I know everyone is, uh, you know, saddened and, and doing the best they can. But I want to talk about him a little bit because I I do have some you know really fond memories of, of him, and I thought it'd be uh, appropriate to to, to discuss yeah. today. He's a big and bold personality. I liked him a lot. Yep. So uh, rest in peace, Josh. My uh, thoughts and prayers go out to your family, and. Uh, you know, thank you for everything. Very good. Um, so getting back here to, uh, you know, Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast today. Thanks for uh, listening to those stories about Josh Evans and uh, the Leland's family. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, we still have a few minutes left in our show today. We are still going to do a participation promo. It is our last one of the year. And um, what I thought would be really cool is to give someone a nice big first prize. We're going to give away a $100 break credit to VintageBreaks.com. Nice. Where, by the way, if you spend that 100 bucks before tomorrow night, um, if you spend it at once, you'll be in our $100 promo. You have a chance to win 1500 A lot of great stuff going on right now on our website. Um, the six other prizes, Dougie, we're going to give people a free spot in our 1966 Tops Baseball set break. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to cover a few other things. Um, this Barry Sanders uh, autograph card, which was sent to us directly from Barry Sanders' agent, uh, Monty was helping us work with Barry. We're trying to um, secure Barry Sanders for a vintage breaks um, athlete experience. Can you see this card, Lou? Am I showing yeah. it? Yeah, okay. no, it's great. So uh, this is courtesy of Barry and his people. This is a really nice, um, it looks like it's an, um, is it an impeccable? It's an impeccable Barry Sanders. Um, and we're going to give this away uh, on Twitter uh, in the coming days. So stay tuned and follow us on Twitter. Uh, what's our account on Twitter at Vintage Breaks? At Vintage underscore Breaks. At Vintage underscore Breaks. So uh, make sure you subscribe to our uh, Twitter uh, channel and follow us. So that way you'll have a chance. Well, I've been on the uh, Barry Sanders uh, Vintage Breaks experience. Uh, I've missed a couple recently. I don't want to miss Barry Sanders. Oh, so so <laughs> last night was more of like a hangout. That's why yeah. we didn't really call you. 
Barry Sanders, Lou, you're our guy. Believe yeah. me. Excellent. Now, you might have to fight Monty <laughs> because Monty is a Lions fan and he doesn't really have much going for him. So, uh, you know, we figured we're going to have to try to involve him in a Barry Sanders break if it happens. Um, special shout out uh, and thanks to Matt Lacoste last night. Um, you know, part of the reason why we didn't have you, Lou, is because it was really a little bit different than usual. Yeah. We just kind of did it as we didn't even know how much stuff we were going to open. We did just personal breaks. And, uh, you know, his, his wife and daughter kind of got caught out in the snow. So we had a little bit more time than we thought. And, um, you know, it was cool. He told some stories about the game, about his gloves. How cool is this? He's giving away a pair of his game used, you know, receiving gloves. And he, he told us an interesting fact last night. He doesn't switch receiving gloves, even when, like when they use, they lose like their stickiness. Yep. They're like, I'll spit on them, rub them together and make them good enough again. Um, he doesn't switch gloves until he drops a ball. It's pretty cool, right? Because, you know, he could end up being hopefully a few games. I could make some jokes, but I'm, I'm going to take a pass. <laughs> I'm just going to take a pass. Well, he's it's the last going. episode of the last week of the year, Lou. You could, you could, you know. You he's could. not going through a lot of receiving gloves all that, all that often. No, <laughs> no, not not at all. And um, that's why I thought it's, it's cool that he's going to be giving them away. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, and so then also, as a, hey, what's up, Jason? As a special thank you. But I also missed out on TMZ. You guys got on TMZ. I wasn't in that. Oh, uh, well, first of all, the TMZ was like total dumb luck. <laughs> you, you know, that was just supposed to be Holly Saunders chilling with us yeah. and doing something very informal on Instagram. I give a free pack of cards to her agent, who's, by the way, sitting to the right of her. Yes. We pulled this Larry Bird, which is like incredible quality. And he texts me later. He goes, you want to be on TMZ? And like, I texted something back like, 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 of course, like, but don't, you know, don't fuck with me. Yeah. You know? And he's like, well, you might be. I'm like, all right, sure. Right. And, yeah, like whatever. And yeah. then he texts me the next morning. He's like, Merry early Christmas. I'm like, what? <laughs> you really got it on TV? That's insane. No, no, I watched that live. That was great. That was it, was, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so Lou, we're going to give away a free spot in our 1958 tops. Cody's egging me on here. He says, make all the jokes. Yeah, so I'm not going to uh, do 58 it. Tops I like Matt. Football set break featuring the Jim Brown PSA six. Mm -hmm. Dougie's going to be running the campaign on our Instagram account. Yeah. And the only way to win and enter, or the only way to enter and then have a chance to win is to follow us on Instagram, to follow Matt Lacoste on Instagram, and then to share with us your favorite football player of all time. We're going to give away a free spot in this break next Wednesday on the loft. Mm -hmm. Tell us all, you got to tell us all about the new year's Eve giveaway too, as we, as we approach that. Oh, it's really cool. So let me, uh, I don't have my phone. Oh, dear. Can you, uh, yeah, if you can give me that, that'd be great. Looking at some of the comments here. We're still working on uh, some card content. Uh, Lou, as soon as we come up with something definitive, we're going to let you know. Yep. We want to do something about 30 minutes in length called card chat or something along those lines. Nice. I'm looking at some of the. Uh... Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. Yeah, very much, Harry. I appreciate Harry's kind words. Yeah, it has been awesome to watch the staff grow and do well here at Vintage Breaks. Yeah. You know, it's been a few years. It's weird. I thought we were actually closing in on four. We're only like three and a half years, uh, you know, uh, into this journey. And, you know, three and a quarter, it's, it's pretty wild. We're very, very excited about where we've come from and where we're going. Yep. Um, so I'm going to share this. Uh, a lot of calls here. I'll have to deal with that stuff after. <laughs> Okay. Oh, check these out. Um, we got three Gretzky rookies in uh, tops. We're waiting to make an offer on them. Oh, nice. Well, what's better to? Should we switch and show it up here? What's What's better? Oh, J Five is going to pull the uh, the stream off the desktop. All here. right, so he's going to take care of that. Or I can share it. Yeah. And I'll get it up. So these are our three Gretzkys that are on Scott's desk. They're all tops, but uh, I think we, we made an offer. Oh, my God. I forgot to open this. Jesus criminy. All right. So let me show you this. Uh, let me show you this uh, Instagram giveaway. It's insane. So if you do not follow us on Instagram yet, you should, because there really isn't going to be a better uh, a better giveaway than this. Um, and then we're going to open up this package that J5 gave me. So check this out. We're giving away. Oh my god! I'm like actually just got ill. I'm like I realize we're giving all this away. <laughs> so we're, we're doing this in conjunction, thank goodness, with some other great companies as well, like my thank friend you, Jason Brian. from Sports, <laughs> Jeff Rose Poker, 
um, Bull Card Exchange, and a few others. So this is the giveaway. You can find out all about it on Instagram. Um, I think you have to like and follow us as well as the other folks. But look at that. Giannis rookie in a nine prism. Yep. A Durant rookie in a nine. A Kobe rookie in a tops rookie in a nine. Carl Anthony Towns, Trey Young prism rookies in a 10. Kyler Murray rookie in a 10. Luka Doncic rookie in a nine. Zion prism rookie in a 10. It's, uh, it's an excellent giveaway. And the only way to win or have a chance to win is to check us out on Instagram. And our Instagram account is Vintage Breaks 459. Nice. Happy New Year. All right. So, J5, I'm going to open this box. Ah, hold on. Oh, Mike, that's nice. Thanks for hanging with us, Mike. We so appreciate bad. it so much. Is this coming in for an appraisal, or, or we already own it? Uh, we made an offer. We should have to finalize it. We made an offer. Okay. So, J5 is telling me we made an offer for this deal. We have to finalize it. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me it's worth opening. So you have no idea what's in this box. I assume it's cards. That's about as far yeah. as I know. Okay. To be fair, if it was grape Swedish fish, it wouldn't be upset. Jeez, I could have had that. I, I could have guessed cards. Yeah. Instagram, Donald. You got to go to Instagram. That's you very cool, Mike. I'm glad we got you back into collecting. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Oh, mother of. This is fucking awesome. I know exactly what this is. Um, I know it now because we talked about this deal the other day. This is insane. All right, excellent. Do we know the background? It was a drugstore? Uh, yes, it was a toy store. It was a toy store in the 1950s. That's all I can tell you. Oh, that's all you know? That's all I can tell And this was leftover stock? Yes. But how did it survive? Like, was it put in a time capsule? Uh, she kept it. She kept it uh, just away. But she inherited it or it was her originally? It was her father's. It was her father's. Yeah. It was just in the back room somewhere? What did you say, Lou? It was just in the back room somewhere at the store? I don't really know, but I can yeah. tell you this. If it's what I think it is and, and they're real and legit, very exciting. Now, normally we wouldn't show something like this off because it's a bunch of quantity, but it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Like they're so cool. It's irrelevant. So now you can, uh, Lou, we're seeing this on the screen, right? Yes. All right. So for those of you that don't know what we're looking at already, let's move the bubble away. This is a tops hobby card cello box. In fact, it says trading card guild on it. That's what tops was originally named, you know, back in the day, or like that's what they use in their advertising. And these sold for 10 cents a pack. Whatever these are. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very, very excited, J5. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy. Do you know how they found us? Anything? Yeah, she found us online. I know, but, you know. Uh, yeah. I'd what did I pay this guy for? I don't uh, understand. <laughs> yeah, she found us online. She wanted to see if we were interested. Her local, the local stores that she sold everything else to, like toys and stuff. Um, I'm like, if she had other cards, and I'm like, uh, I like no, almost just broke my heart. Uh, okay. They just they didn't know how much to offer. Oh. So, J5 was saying that there was some other stuff that came with this, like toys and things of that. So, what was it? A five and dime shop? Or was it, what was it? A soda pop shop? It or? Was a toy store. Oh, it was a toy store. So, these folks owned a toy store. Yep. And uh, the woman's father, I guess, owned a toy store, and they had some leftover inventory. Cody's trying to get me to help move. I don't know. Should I go? Should I go to Vegas and help move? I would go to Vegas and just, you know, hang out. Uh, stop teasing us. All right. Now, there's two types of products in here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what? Right. Oh, exactly. Stop teasing. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So these, oh, my goodness. Oh, they're these, unopened. They're unopened packs of 58 Tops Zorro. Oh, my God. Like, really, really hard to find. Really hard to find, man. To give you some perspective, like, nines and tens from this set, nines go for hundreds, tens might go for 500 or up. Like, wow. this is a legit find. Like, we're going to make J5 dress up as Zero, man. <laughs> I like it. That would be great. This is awesome. J5 would make a great Zorro. Oh, of course he would. Yeah. So, if we only bought one pack... 
I would be happy. Yep. Here's the deal. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> and isn't there one other kind of pack in here? It's oh, it's on the bottom? All right, I'm not going to disturb. No, you got to show it. No, you, you can't do that. Yeah. Dig. Oh, my God. These are just cool, man. These are really cool. Ball breaks wants you to break them. Not tonight. <laughs> Will you do that as breaks, you think? Is there, enough, sure. is there enough of market to do it, do it as a break? I haven't really considered it yet. Just know it's cool. Yep. <laughs> James says J5 was already on his horse. Yes. Uh, there should be 12 cards in a pack. <laughs> Let's see, Bobby. I haven't even looked yet. As you know, I just... Oh, man. It's even Stamp Zorro. This is the original fucking box. Wow. Pardon my French, man, but this is just cool. Boom! J5, I'm glad that you made us open this on camera. You know who would be proud? Josh. Yeah. Josh loves non-sports. He's been collecting non-sports passionately for the last several years, and he would enjoy this thoroughly. That's cool. I'm trying to get a gauge. What is what is the market for something like this, though? Are there people collecting these cards? Oh, yeah. yeah yep. Oh, yeah. Look on the PSA set registry. Just go to 58 Zorro. That'll tell you how it's going. Oh, man, it's all good. We're, you know, we're transparent. We told them what we thought it was worth. And, you know, we like we reached a deal based on that. We don't, you know, that's the way to buy stuff and, and put yourself out there. Believe me, you know, Matt and anyone else who's listening, and Bobby, you know this from being around. If you pay people poorly and you advertise you have great stuff and you're paying them poorly, let me tell you something. You're going to get yourself into trouble really fast. You're going to stop that pipeline of stuff coming in. Yep. And you're going to develop a bad reputation. On top of which, you're going to have a lot of bad fucking karma. Yep. So, yep. It's a These closed people, market. You have to make good deals, deals that work for you. Everybody. wants me to keep digging. Yeah. Yeah. There, there. I want to make sure. There. All right, all right, all right. Oh, dear. I didn't want to disturb them. How many packs are there? Uh, How many packs are there? 21. Oh, my God. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. There's 21 fucking packs, Lou. Oh my God! I can't yeah, even. A good you question. These all out? <laughs> Why save them for fifty years? I'm, I'm guessing they just got put somewhere and forgotten. They just got put aside. That's it. Oh, yeah. so cool. So here's the other type of issue. That was just remaining. She only had three. She only had three of these. Fifty-seven tops planes. Oh, I really like cool, that. man. Look at that. Oh, yeah, Matt, you've sold us a bunch of cards. Yeah, no, we pay really fair. So, J5, you're making me nervous. I had to touch all these packs. <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, guys, it really looks like they were just made. They're very, You can tell that they're brittle. Yep. Meaning, like, they're okay, but if you play with them, they're, like, they're not going to stand up to time. But the colors are vivid. They look oh, are you kidding yeah. me? We're definitely going to... I mean, I'm going to break a pack for myself. I have to. Wow. J5, awesome job. Thanks. Now, this is not our most valuable you know, deal that we've ever bought through the mail. It is absolutely one of the coolest. Gary makes a good point. The cellophane held up pretty well over... over oh, are you kidding me? I can tell you what happened with these. These have not been moved. They've been on the shelf. They've been staring at them. They decided to sell some family heirlooms. And they're like, oh, they found us online. Great. <laughs> Glad you did. Very excited. Oh, these are cool. We are dressing J5 up as Zorro. That's going to happen. Oh, it has to. Well, I mean, it's very yep. appropriate now. So, J5, I'd like to give this to you to put on a shelf safely for now. Or put in my office. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad that J5 made me open that. That was awesome. Oh, that was great. Yeah. 
I love so, how you, I love how it came in. The whole thing happened. And you really had not much idea what was going at all, going on at all. No, I didn't. Well, because you know, I'm not in every day, and yep. I, you know, we actually we got a bunch of stuff going on now. Sure. Scotty's back, our VP, and and you know, the funnels being filled up, and there's a lot of action happening. People are dropping off, shipping yep. in, and so there really it's there's you know it's a lot of juice, a lot of action happening. So uh, we're certainly thankful for it and excited. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to, um, you know, just close out the show and then we'll have J5 give away the, uh, the prizes on the, on the, uh, on the vintage break show, Lou. So that way we can kind of right. close out here. Yep. Um, you know, I wanted to, like I said, uh, you know, say a few you know, kind words about Josh and my time, you know, with him and at Leland's certainly going to miss the big guy. Love and the then, stars, yeah. you know, to our, uh, to our community, um, it's been a heck of a year. Uh, you know, I realized that. Um, you know, a lot of us just to even be tuning in, whether it be you're buying into a break or you're just able to tune in, like we have it a lot better than, than some other folks that are out, out there having a more difficult time. So um, try to do your best to keep everything in perspective, you know, for now. And then hopefully as things open back up, you know, in 2021, everyone to be healthy and safe. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say for me, you know, when this all started, meaning Vintage Breaks a few years ago, and then you fast forward, uh, you know, we were doing the Vintage Breaks PSA show, which, you know, kind of morphed into Layton's Loft, our weekly yep. show here. Um, I do this because I love it. Now, I don't do everything I do with cards because I love it, i.e. paying bills and, you know, all sorts of other things that come along with being an entrepreneur and being, you know, someone who runs their own business and such. Um, but I feel very uh, appreciative and very thankful. And um, I know for me, uh, I wouldn't be able to accomplish it if it wasn't for our team. So if it wasn't for Sam, it wasn't for Emily and for John uh, and for Dougie and for Robert and Brian. Uh, and then, you know, Scott as well, our VP uh, of Just Collect, but who does help uh, us here um, at Vintage Breaks. And then, of course, Vintage Breaks South with Chris and Drew and Vintage Breaks West with Charles. Um, you know, it's really, it's just not possible. And then, um, you know, in terms of, you know, my wife, Julie, and, uh, you know, my beautiful son, Crosby, uh, you know, I, I definitely spent less time with them than I would have liked in 2020 because of work. And I'm going to try to do more of that in 2021, which is still be successful at work. Um, but then also stopping to make sure that you're smelling the roses as much as you can, you know, along the way of the journey. And, uh, Lou, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing Layton's Loft. That's for sure. Well, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be part of this family on Vintage Breaks. It is awesome. I just have a blast. I love everybody here. J5 is like my writing partner now. Uh, love him. Love being part of all this and and you know, being in the industry, doing the show. I mean, it's it's just so much fun. And it, you know, it's work like everything else, but it's just fun. It's just this is my favorite part of the week right here. And I want to thank everybody who follows us. The, the PSA shows here on the Loft, all the all the social media outlets. All these great friends. I got friends here. I'm going to go help Cody move apparently in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I got all these great friends here that I never would have had if not for this op op opportunity. So thank you. Thank everybody involved. Thank everybody at Vintage Breaks and to all our audience. It's just, this is a blast. This is a good hang. Well, Lou, I can't say it better than that. Thanks again, compadre. Uh, it's been a fun year. Looking forward to see what 2021 holds. Yes. And uh, thanks again uh, to everyone out there who's tuned in this year. Uh, to Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast. You can find us every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Special shout out to Cogent Marketing, um, Darren Prince from uh, Prince Marketing, and my friend Patrick, uh, as well as me, Chasky. All those folks in one way, shape, or form. Oh, and my friend Anthony, uh, one way, shape, or form have helped um, bring athlete breaks and athlete experiences to vintage breaks in our community. And uh, it's been a blast doing that. So everyone have a great New Year's and we'll see you next year, right? Yep. All right, G5, you can take over.